Welcome back once again, guys. Today we are going to be looking at some more paddle games. Yes, I love the paddle games. They're really cool. And you may not know it, but your Atari 2600 paddles will also work on your Atari 8-bit computer. I'm going to be playing these games on my uh, XEGS using my Ultimate Cart, so there's a lot of different ROMs I can try. And we'll try a few of them. We're going to play a few of these games. So let's check out Pong, first of all. Uh, we're only going to be playing this single player, but we'll check that out and then we'll move on to some other stuff. So let's get started. Got a couple different versions of the Pong uh, ROM here. This one says analog, so I'm going to go with that one, but I'm not sure if it really makes a difference. But since we're using paddle controls, I think it's probably, probably the one we want to go with. Okay, uh, man, it, it, Atari 8-bit computer is so much better than the 2600. So, uh, yeah, it just looks better, and it's just a better presentation overall. We're only going to be playing single player, though, so we won't be able to check out all of the standard modes. If I move the paddle here, it lets me uh, cycle through like the different uh, modes that are available to play with. So we're just going to take a look. There's hockey, there's few different ones of course i'm really only able to play single player right now so we'll just do the practice mode here we go Oop. and that is pong but maybe a little bit a little bit better, a little cleaner graphics than on the 2600. Paddle works fine. Oh, if I can, <laughs> the paddle works fine. The Cyrus does not work fine. And you get the idea. All right, let's check out Super Breakout. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, here we go. Super Breakout. Let's give it a shot. Ah. And some of these games are two player. You know, they do offer two player support. Obviously, Pong did, Super Breakout does. But uh, right now, I'm just, it's just me. Super Breakout seems very good. Really nice version. Pretty much the like the Atari 5200 version, but with paddles instead of the analog stick. Either of which I think is a great way to play this game. Okay, you get the idea. All right, so Kaboom. There's supposed to be a good version of Kaboom that'll work here with the paddles. Let's try that. Okay, here we go. Kaboom. I have no idea how this is going to go. We'll give it a shot. Uh, 
Oh, this is great. This is nice. Oh boy. Oh boy. That didn't go well. <laughs> You definitely need to paddle for this. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, damn it. Can I get my name in? Ah, uh, that'll work. Let's try it again. Oh boy. Oh man. <laughs> close oh crap yeah oh I see I do my name with the paddle oh that didn't work all right, that'll work. Whatever. One more time. Last time, and then we'll move on to something else. I gotta tell you, the colors look a lot different on a TV. I'm actually playing this on my Sony Trinitron CRT. And the colors look quite a bit different on the TV as opposed to how they look on the capture. Not sure why that is. That the the play field area is brown and on the capture it looks almost greenish. Colors are way more pronounced on the TV. I don't know, it's strange. That Activision the colors on the Activision are not showing up properly on the capture either. Hmm. I don't know why that is. It's weird. You know what? This is going through my RetroTink 2X. There's a comb filter setting you can change. I'm going to try that and see what happens. Well, that's much better. That's actually much better. That looks more like what it's supposed to look like. Let me see if I can switch out here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Put it there. And we'll go with that one. Okay. Sorry, just testing out settings. It's still not the same though. It looks way better on the TV. But that's usually the case, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Ah! That's too much fun. I will keep playing that all night. But we got some more to look at. And the next one I want to look at is a game called Castle Crisis. 
which is a version of Warlords. So let's check that out. Okay, here we go. Warlords or Castle Crisis. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. This is a cool version of Warlords. The graphics are awesome. Ah! Oh, there's, oh crap. No, do not want. Wow, that's pretty badass right there. That is really cool. No, stop it. Ah, they're teaming up on me again. No, again. Damn. Okay, that's really cool. That's actually really cool. All right, now there's a bunch more games we can look at. We're only going to look at a few more, though. There's a version of Night Driver I have to see. I have to check this out. So here we go. Okay, here we go. Night Driver. I have no idea what this is going to be like on this. You know, obviously played it in the arcade and on 2600. Let's see what it looks like on the computer here. Oh, okay, nice. There it is. Okay, look at that. Hmm. Okay, I don't know how to get it to start. Let me see if I can figure this out. Well, bad news for Night Driver. Um, yeah, it doesn't work correctly. I don't know what the deal is. I've tried several versions of it that have been released. None of them work properly. <laughs> One of them 
sort of kind of wants to try to work, but they don't work. I get a bunch of weird artifacts on the screen and the best I can get is if I use the paddles, the best I can get is I can use the gas and it'll go, but I can't steer. And I tried this with both the first and second controller ports and that's that's it strangely enough this game wants you to switch gears like because you're in gear one right now and i have no way that i could even try to switch gears using the paddle controls see all these weird artifacts on the screen i have no idea why that's happening but this game is not working now i'll show you what it looks like if i try to play with a a regular controller like a digital controller Okay, so I got my trusty Sega Genesis controller plugged in. And we'll skip past this and this. And we will start it up. Okay, so now the gas works and I can steer and I can shift gears. But there's still all these weird artifacts on the screen. And I don't know why. I don't know what's causing that. Hmm. It's very strange. I think it's probably because whatever this game is coded for, the XEGS is just not what it, you know, one of those things. It's possible. I guess there could be some issue with my RAM on this computer that I'm using, except I, you know, I don't see this kind of thing on anything else. This is like the first time I've seen something like this. So if it is an issue with my computer, it's something this game specifically is messing with. I don't know. Who knows? It, it is possible. So, so much for night driver. Let's check out something else. Okay, there are three Arkanoid games on this console, officially officially released anyway. So, uh, yeah, let's check out Arkanoid 3 here. And let's see if we can... One player mode. Two player mode, one player mode. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can get this to work. All right. Let me see if I can figure this out. All right, next up is a game called Livewire, and this is sort of a clone of Tempest. My daughter was just over here, and we had to play a little Kaboom. Pretty cool, so I guess we'll be doing that on a video soon, because she really liked that one. Okay. Let's see if we can get this to work. I'm on the... Oh, I forgot I had a joystick plugged in to the second port so it's looking for that there we go paddle Let's see if we can get this to work oh, other paddle there we go well oh, come on now
strange shapes. Okay, believe it or not, there's a sequel to this too. Alright, so Lavar 2, the sequel. Here we go. That's pretty cool right there. That is pretty cool. You might be wondering what happened to Arkanoid 3. How come you didn't see Arkanoid 3? And that's because I couldn't figure out how to get the damn thing to start. <laughs> My daughter walked in and uh, we started talking about it and I couldn't figure it out. And then we played a little bit of Kaboom and I forgot about it and I went on to Livewire live, live here. Well, the first one. And uh, so we'll try, we'll see if we can get Arkanoid to work. If not, there's two other Arkanoid games I can try. But I was trying to get Arkanoid 3 to work. It's the last one. I wanted to see what it looked like. I got it to come up to the menu. I just couldn't figure out how to get the game to start. Oh, audio is not working right now either. It's always something. All right, let me see if I can fix that audio. And we'll try it. Well, you know, I'll use the opportunity. We'll go ahead and move on to Arkanoid. Ah, what the hell? We'll play just a little bit more of this now that I got the sound going. Okay, now some Arkanoid. Okay, back to Arkanoid 3. I figured this out. <laughs> I don't, it's not very intuitive. I figured it out. Okay, so I need to use the paddle, so I press A, the first letter of Atari paddles. Okay. Now, fire to begin, so I hit, I press the button. Okay, now... Trainer or normal mode is what it's asking. So I press N for normal and boom. Now we're in the game. So let's try it. Pretty cool. Pretty nice graphics. Oh boy.
Okay, so there you go. There's some paddle games. There's a bunch more that you can get that you can uh, play on the Atari computer. These are just a few of the ones that I've found that are actually really cool, really fun to play. So I'm sure we're going to want to play these two player. <coughs> so look for that video coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.